Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a lighthouse in in the sunset. I just want a very simple sort of grey and pink sky and sea. I'm using a reference photograph from Pixabay for this painting but I'm only using it as a very rough guide and, and then I'm, I'm simplifying the photograph and mostly doing my own thing. I shall leave a reference to the photograph in the description below if you're interested in, in seeing it. I'm using Milford paper. It's um, cold pressed paper and it's taped to my board at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. I'm going straight into the dry, onto the dry paper with a very weak, wet mixture of alizarin scarlet lake. And I'm using my large squirrel mop. Now I'm adding a similar mixture, in other words, um, quite watery and pale, of Payne's Grey. Trying to cut around the, the lighthouse a little bit there, I'm not bothered too much, but I want to try and preserve the white of the paper for the lighthouse if I can. Just trying to make sure it's quite a smooth wash, so I'm softening it in places. I'm trying to keep the pink in the sky quite low down on the horizon, and now I'm going to get some of those colours across the sea. All the time the paper's wet, I can make slight adjustments to it. Now I'm tilting the board round, um, allowing the paint to flow downward, so gravity is helping me with the smoothing process. And as you can see, the wash is nice and smooth now. I've turned it back round and I'm just feathering through softening back in places. So my lighthouse area is mostly unpainted which is what I wanted but I'm now going to while it's still damp add in a bit more slightly richer thicker drier mixture of Payne's Grey just to start off um, the sea wall and the rocks while it's still wet because then um, the grey there will soften and diffuse and give me quite a nice base hopefully for the rest of the painting. It's beginning to dry, but it's still just about damp enough. So I'm going to take my clean, damp flat brush and I'm going to pull it through the water to give me a nice white sort of um, ripple line or reflection. Just going to put a couple of those in to start off the look of the water, which I want to be very calm but still to have a little bit of um, life and movement. So now I'm pulling the flat brush through, creating more, more horizontal uh, faint marks and lines, just with the slightly damp paint, allowing it to build up some texture. Maybe just a small water line underneath the rocks there. And I think that will do for my underpainting. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely and then come back and continue. It's completely dry now, so I'm 
going to rough in my seawall with some fairly weak watery burnt sienna on my flat brush and I'm following my penciled lines there's a little tower there or something so I'm just going to um, put the burnt sienna in that as well Going to add in a few darks while the paint's wet so it should just softly diffuse and add a bit of variation to the tone there. Trying to keep it very simple. Just warm up the area underneath the lighthouse a bit. I'll go in with, with some more colour there later on and it'll all dry a lot lighter as well. Next I'm going to put some of that light across the lighthouse too. Sort of like a just a golden glow. It will dry back um, a lot lighter than this but it just gives me a bit a bit more warmth to the stone blocks that the lighthouse is made from. And I'm running some Payne's Grey down um, across the left side of the lighthouse because that's in shadow. It should diffuse into the weak burnt sienna and hopefully I'll end up with an area that looks like shadow. I'm going to soften that edge there so it blends across into the white area and hopefully it will just feather out and give me a nice light soft edge on the left side of the of the lighthouse. Now just before I let all that dry I think I'm just going to put in a few more darks Even though the right side of the lighthouse is lighter, I want to define its edges a, li a little bit more, I think, and then to add some more darks to the seawall in places too. And I'm going to leave it to dry now. Now it's dried off quite nicely, it's softened back a little bit, so I'm going to carry on now. And I'm going to use my flat brush and a richer mix of Payne's Grey to darken up across the base of the rocks to add shadow, but also to add in those darker areas of, of rocks on the seawall. Trying to keep the marks fairly random but um, linking the marks all the way across the base of the wall. And as you can see it's really bringing the shape of the seawall out a lot more. I'm going to work in the same way all the way across to the right edge, trying to make sure that my shapes don't look too repeated. A bit more detail on this, this little tower or turret going to put just a hint of a roof, a couple of windows maybe, a bit more shadow, just, just to give it a bit more definition. I'm using my small calligraphy brush for this, just an unbranded cheap callig calligraphy brush I bought online.
Now I'm adding some burnt sienna rocks in exactly the same way and once they've gone in I'll take my small squirrel mop and um, just soften them back a bit and hopefully that will just have the effect of, of giving the rocks, warming the rocks up a little bit and adding a bit of light and form. In my reference photo, the link is in the description, there's just the hint of a reflection coming from the lighthouse. So I'm going to put that in to start with just using burnt sienna, it's quite watery, on my flat brush. And I'm just putting in and placing lines with my flat brush horizontally and sort of fairly unevenly, trying to get them exactly below where the lighthouse is. And I'm now touching in a bit of Payne's Grey into the wet burnt sienna on the left side to indicate that darker shadowed edge of the lighthouse. Once all these lines have um, dried, I shall be softening things back a bit um, with, some, with some clean water. But at the moment, I think that will do. While I'm waiting for the reflections to dry, I'm going to put in a few of these kind of posts or aerials that are, that are sticking out from behind the sea wall. I'll do a bit more work on those later on, but, but that will do for now. It's just paints grey and the tips of the flat brush. If it's a bit too dark, while the paint's wet, you can dab it with a tissue and it'll just soften it in places so that it looks less harsh. With my small calligraphy brush, I'm just going to add a few more details, strengthen up that seawall edge there, and dot in those sort of, there's some little windows um, or openings in the seawall there, I'm just indicating them with the calligraphy brush. bit of shadow across the top of the lighthouse and the windows and the top of the lighthouse. The reflections are now dry, so I've got my small Pro Art Harky brush and I've dipped it in clean water and running it horizontally across the sea area, being careful not to scrub too hard, but I, I just want to soften things down, blend things a little bit more, but without disturbing the paint and without losing the dry brush that I've got in the front of the water. And I hope you can see that where I've grazed the bottom of the rocks, where they're very dark, where I've grazed them with the, the water and the brush, there's a little bit of dark paint beginning to run down. I'm helping it down with my Harky brush, just gently pulling down. I don't want too much. As I say, there's hardly any reflection in the photograph. Um, but I just want to just have a hint of it quite close to the rocks. Very gently dragging down with the damp Harky brush, encouraging a little bit of the Payne's grey to come down. Now that's a, a very pale glaze of Alizarin Scarlet Lake across the seawall to add a little bit of a pink sunset glow. And that just needs to dry again. And now that it's dry, um, I'm going to add some bushes and trees just growing out of the rocks 
and up, up, up over the sea wall in places. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. I'm using my small calligraphy brush, just dotting, dashing and sort of scribbling in very loose shapes of little bushes, trees, maybe some ivy just growing up over the seawall in places. There are a few bushes and trees in the photograph, but I'm going to put a few more in because I, I think that they will be quite a nice detail. I'm varying the tones slightly by adding either a bit more yellow or a bit more blue to the, to the green mixture and that will give me some variety as well. I don't want detail here but I do want a um, variety of hues within these bushes. And hopefully you'll be able to see that I've used a bit of negative painting to emphasise different parts of the seawall without painting them. I've just painted round them uh, with the green mixture and the plants. I don't want too much near the, the lighthouse. Now I'm just putting in a bit of extra cadmium yellow to lighten it up near the top. I think I'm nearly finished. A few more details to some of these aerials. There's um, a sticky out bit there with the tips of the flat brush and some sort of poles or wires and things leading from that. So I'm going to put those in in a minute. I think this, whatever it is, needs to be a little bit higher. Strengthen up that base a bit more. And I've decided to paint in some trees across the top of the sea wall coming in from the right. I'm using the same mixture of ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. Trying to this time leave some white, well, not white, the um, some gaps where you can see the sky through them. So I'm not completely blocking these ones in. Now a larger one just going off across the tape. Adding a bit of water and just softening everything back a bit. Now lastly, I'm going to add in my darkest darks to finish the painting off. So I'm reinforcing the lines that I've already made on the lighthouse in places, the windows. I'll put a, a strong darker edge down that side. And then I'll start working in um, just the darkest shadows across through the rocks around behind the lighthouse. So it's a process of using the dark paint, dipping into water, softening back a little bit, um, then adding more paint, bringing it across the rocks in places linking the darks with the trees, the bushes, and the rocks, and the sea wall. Maybe a hint of some brickwork here and there, nothing too obvious though.
always stop every now and again and look at your painting and make sure that it's that it's looking okay stepping back and taking a look at it with fresh eyes um now i'm putting in these wires from this sort of aerial or whatever it is not sure what it is there but trying to keep my lines nice and thin but fairly random hitting and missing so that it doesn't look too obvious a few dots and dashes just to add a bit of a something and nothing and I think that will do I'm going to call it finished you could obviously add more detail if you wanted to but I'm going to leave it at, at this and remove the tape and see how it looks with the nice clean white border. It's just ordinary masking tape, decorator's masking tape. And hopefully um, you can see that the painting has come together quite nicely. It's very simple. Um, the pink in the sky just lights up the grey a little bit. Um, it's just that nice calm moment uh, before sunset in a cloudy sky. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.